First day in the new shop, got the dinos pulled out, getting ready to pull in the first car. This is my neighbor's Fitch in Camaro. He just recently put a cam in it, and he's been waiting on me to tune. I said, if you just hang on just a little bit, I'll tune it on the hub dyno in the new shop. So he was patient with me, so I'm going to get it in here, get it set up, and get tuning on it. All right, everyone, so about two hours, and I got it all set up. Took a little bit longer than I wanted, than normally I'll want it to take, but uh, I had everything still from the house, the fan, everything I still had to bring in. Uh, but on a normal maybe 45 minutes to get a car set up, but all hooked up wired in uh, I need another extension cord to reach over there. Sean came by to help film some stuff make some cool content April's here ordering dinner just taking my time the first time doing this making sure everything's good Make sure everything works. So got it just about to the point where I can start um, Putting power to it and then starting to run the car and get it figured out the cam and it definitely needs uh, a lot of idle tuning So I will start off with that I brought my tuning school book, so I will work through the idling and then part throttle, then full throttle. So I went ahead and made some idle changes, got everything unlocked. So I'm gonna go ahead and start it, roll it up to speed and make sure everything looks good on the hubs and uh, make sure it idles better and it doesn't wanna die right away. I went ahead and got done with the idle tuning. Uh, gonna go ahead and fire it up, make sure it idles good. And then if not, I gotta make some more adjustments, but uh, I went ahead and entered in all the parameters that usually work for a car like this. Um, add some idle airflow, add some RPM, uh, and some timing to it. It's definitely at a, idling quite a bit better now. Uh, before it was super low, and now it's at least holding steady to what I'm commanding right around the 800 mark is kind of where I'm at. Alrighty, one. So after doing the idle and everything, I need to start doing some steady state style tuning where I'm stepping up in the cells on the mass airflow. I'm having a few issues with the computer and the key for the software not working or whatever. I think the computer didn't update, now it's mad. I'm gonna start doing some of the stay stay tuned, going cell to cell on the mass airflow. I'm gonna just use the handheld with the box. You actually don't need the software. You can just control it all through the box for stepping up increments. But to do that, it needs an RPM input. So uh, it comes with this little handheld deal. It's pretty cool. Um, it's called an RPM I box and you can clip it onto like a plug wire, um, one of the coil wires, different things like that. Comes down here, and this little box is what will pick up the RPM signal and feed it back to the main box. So we're gonna go ahead and use that and do some tuning to get the part throttle dialed in, and then I'll need the software fired back up to do the full throttle and power runs to finish it off. All right, so I got the scanner all set up to do some part throttle tuning. April stopped by to make sure I'm safe and uh, Give me some company while I'm here by myself tuning. All right, went ahead and set it to 1500 RPMs. Gonna try that. About doubles where it kind of kicks in. So it lugs the car down right there. It raises RPM. should be pretty good. Well, I think that's where I'm gonna have to end for the night. I got some issues still with the software not wanting to pull up or not giving me access to it because it can't read the uh, little dongle that comes with the software. But the car dialed in pretty decent, pretty easy on uh, startup, idle, and part throttle. Just need to do the fun part, which is wide open throttle and making some power. Hopefully uh, they'll get back with me tomorrow and give me the way to fix it so then I can come back over here and finish off this car. So we'll see you guys tomorrow. All right, everyone, back for day two. Got the software figured out after last night. Uh, ended up being the little dongle that allows you access to the software. Actually had a date that expired a few days prior. So got a new code for that. 
computer's fired up, everything's looking good, and today we're going to have some fun because it's all that's left on this is the full throttle tuning and uh, making some power and seeing how much it'll make. So in the comments below, drop how much you think this Camaro is going to make. Stock LS3 with a cam and uh, long tubes and a cold air intake. So a few little mods on there. I think they make around 430 stock to the crank and we'll see what it makes today to the wheels with those mods. Something also to note on this, this car has 153,000 miles and he just did the cam in it. So it's been an awesome car for him. He just wanted to throw a cam in it, get a little bit more power out of it. So as you guys have seen before, I ended up getting all the wideband hooked up to the HP tuners. Got the LM2 here. And then I just need to fire the car. I'll let it warm up and verify that I have O2 readings here in HP tuners. Oh, I was afraid of that. Uh, last night the car was acting kind of funny anyway, and I was afraid that the battery was gonna die. So I guess I will be back with the battery charger. So something else to note when tuning cars, if your battery is not in really good shape, it's real hard on batteries because you're riding tunes, you're driving it for very little, you're riding tunes, you're driving it for very little. So there's a lot of key on time, but not a lot of driving time, especially at RPM, some idling, and then you make a pull and then it's over, you adjust and go from there. So got the battery hooked up. Shout out to Jamie, he had it sitting here ready to go. So I just hooked it up for a minute, but uh, these are the little things that I'll learn and need, know I need having around the shop, which usually tune in EFI cars, I've had it many times where batteries die. Uh, usually it's the first start of the project, the battery's been sitting around, it has been charging. So that's another thing to recommend. If you're getting ready to have your car tuned, make sure you throw a car charger on the battery the night before, uh, just to help prevent a little bit of this. I'll go ahead and see if it'll start up and then I'll let it run for a little bit and uh, hopefully charge up. to tune it towards a real choppy choppy idle but it has a pretty good chop to it but yet it's not so low that it's like it wants to die when you pull up to a stoplight uh, i always hate that feeling like oh is it gonna die so i always have the idle set a little bit some people like it super low so it chops real hard so i guess that's just kind of my preference on how i set idle but if some people want it more choppy i'll lower it but that's kind of where i like to set it right there one of the parts that kind of sucks about using the end of the tail sniffer like the lm2 deal is at idle it doesn't do you really any good but you tune that off the of narrow bands anyway Rev it up a little bit, comes right in, and then it goes back to being lean once it's down a little ways. I got the idle set right about 8, 850 right now. You can see right there the Innovate LM2 at 22, and then this changes some 23, 25. It'll, it gives all sorts of readings, but that's where we're at there. So we will go ahead and uh, make some pulls. All right, so here we're gonna make the first pull at about 5,000 RPM. Watch our fuel, watch our RPM, and see what happens. So first pull shows uh, 349 horsepower and 433 torque. So it is definitely pretty lean just by rolling into it. It actually showed 14 on the wideband and then the target is way off. So uh, usually what I do is sometimes you'll have where the MPVI doesn't, I need to actually bring up target air fuel um, on the next one and then it'll give me the true numbers but I can just calculate from what I'm wanting which I'm wanting about 13. Uh, I'm shooting for about 13 air fuel on this one because it isn't the sniffers in the back of the pipe which gives you about 12.5 and then we can start out there and possibly lean it out a little bit more if need. You can already tell it's got a lot better fueling in it. Click the go button, wait for it to turn green. Green to stop it. 364.472 on that pass. As you guys can see on the first pass, it made 349, the, the second one 364, then 433 and 472. So now as you guys can see, the fueling's off by about four to three, six percent. So I'm gonna smooth this out a little bit better um, and then add a little, take a little bit on the tip end right there. It looks like it's a little fat where it initially rolls in, which that's enrichment rate, you can be smooth that as well. 
um, but starting to come around. Uh, and then looking down here, I'm not seeing any uh, knock retard. So there would be a big line that would step up here. So it means we can throw some more timing in it. I have 22 degrees in it right now. Uh, so we'll throw some more in it and that'll make power as well. But I want to get fueling uh, figured out. It's good enough now that I can start revving it higher as well. All right, so that was really good. It ended up making 453 and 484 torque. Uh, and I did rev it out about another thousand RPM uh, from what I was. That's pretty crazy gain to see 100 horsepower in a thousand RPM range, but that's right where the cam's getting happy. As you can see, the torque didn't pick up as much, uh, but that's where we're at. We're starting to actually make some progress here. It's still not knocking. It's got plenty of fuel in it, so I went ahead and actually leaned it out a little bit this time and uh, threw a couple degrees of timing in it, try to find where knock is and back it out of there. I'm gonna rev it out a little bit more again. Went ahead and found the rev limiter with this having a cam in it. Went ahead and raised that up a little bit. So just starting to make progress, another pull or two and we might be good. So if you take the stock number when this thing was brand new, it's supposed to make about 430 horsepower. Take 18-ish percent away from drivetrain loss. Uh, I think that nets you somewhere around the 360 range and this on the last pull made 453. So it's almost picked up almost 100 horsepower over stock and it has 150,000 miles on it. Alrighty, so made some changes. Gonna go ahead and make a pull here, rev it out a little bit further and see if it makes a little bit more power. So I set the start mile an hour to about 50 mile an hour, which is about 2,000 RPM. So watch for the start mile an hour to get there. Good to go, hit go. So 484 horsepower and 494 torque. So picked up even a little bit more there. Quick glimpse at fueling and it's within about one to 4%. So I'm gonna go ahead and call that good on fueling. Uh, it made really good power right there. So uh, I just need to look at timing. It looked like it started to knock just at the very top. So I will probably pull one degree of timing out of it, make one final pull, make sure everything looks good and send it on its way. So that's what it looks like towards the end. It ended up making 494 horsepower and 491 torque. So super close. Kept revving it out more. That's probably all we want to really rev this combo out to is about 6,800. I think that's about where it's at. I'm going to verify. So I'm going to go ahead and leave it there since it's starting to knock right around that 65, 6,700 RPM range. I actually need to pull a few degrees of timing out of it. Uh, so then during normal condition, everything, it doesn't want to knock. Uh, in case like you're doing a burnout or you're racing it a bunch or whatever you try to always keep it safe for people too you don't want the tune on the ragged edge of always wanting to knock uh even though that's how the factory does it all but 494 and 491 is pretty impressive out of this car i mean super simple setup so i'm gonna go ahead and leave it there make those few uh timing adjustments flash the tune for the last time call it a day so i'm gonna make one more pull just to make sure everything looks good no knock no anything and uh we'll go from there So I lied, I wanted to uh, just try to squeeze a little bit more out of it, make sure there's no knock and everything, and ended up making 496 horsepower on it. So, as you guys can see, that's all the pulls. Started out with 350, ended up with 496 by revving a little bit more and cleaning up fueling and timing. So now we're gonna go ahead and unhook this thing. All right, everyone, so that is it for the fifth gen Camaro tune. Ended up making 496 horsepower. So got everything unhooked. And now it's just time to roll it out and give it back to the owner. So if you wanna see more tuning videos like this one, make sure you hit that subscribe button. We'll see you next time.